I learned over time that you can't announce everything that's happening, good or bad, in your life. When I made the decision to take a contract on the other side of the world, I only told my close friends and family. I prayed about it, and I knew that I needed this not only for the educational experience, but for self. Being able to make a difference in the lives of others while living amongst them and embracing their cultural differences would be something I could one day share with my own kids. At this point, driving to the airport, I wasn't phased about the move. In fact, I don't think it ever really hit me that I was about to do this. The one thing I can always say is I've never been afraid to try even anything, even when it meant traveling 20 plus hours to get there. I managed to see or at least talk to my family and close friends before I left, so there wasn't a fancy going away party or a big departure deal at the airport. It was just me, my god brother, and a whole lot of luggage that I am thankful was under 50 pounds so I didn't have to pay extra. <laughs> but I literally tried to pack my life for this next chapter. Well, at least I thought I did. I really didn't know what to expect or what I would really need for a year in another country. Let's just say I didn't exactly, um, yeah, pack everything that I needed. <laughs> Found that out once I actually arrived. Chicago, Chicago, a quick hour and 45 minute flight that gave me an even quicker 44 minute layover to walk as fast as I could to my international gate. Thank goodness my actual flight was delayed, so I made it. This was the last time I'd be using my phone domestically in the States, so I used this time to send last minute text messages and make all of my last minute phone calls. This flight to Tokyo was about to be a long 13 hours. So at this point, I was still kind of mentally preparing myself for the flight. I don't think the idea that I was moving to the other side of the world literally had even hit me here. I wasn't a good hour into the fight and I got my first taste at some real authentic I think Asian food I kept the water but I just couldn't bring myself to um, eat the food I wasn't ready <laughs> The 13 hours weren't actually bad. It was a packed flight, but my window seats never steered me wrong. I had taken some z -Cool too, so I slept on and off throughout the flight. At this point, I think it was kind of hitting me that I was doing it. I was actually moving by myself to a very unfamiliar country. I still wasn't afraid, just like more anxious. Here I was, already amongst people who did not speak my language. The food was unfamiliar, as you can tell on the plane. <laughs> the currency was different. I was in their world, so I was getting my first dose of adapting to something new. It was very fast paced, I say. Nobody was mean or, you know, looked at me strange. Everybody was just focused, like any other airport, like they had somewhere to be. Here I had about a, I think, two and a half hour layover. So I had intended on getting some food and of course, kind of making sure I was getting to my next gate. I had never been to Tokyo, so I had no idea where I was going.
し、お客様、手が様、ただ様、ありがとうございます。Tokyo to Jakarta, Indonesia was about eight hours.、Um, like the caption said, I think I was about three hours in. Again, I had taken some z q u i l so I was really asleep. But、um, it was really light. It wasn't a lot of people on the plane, so I actually had the whole road to myself. My legs were stretched out and I was sleeping. On this flight,、um, the food was pretty similar. I had teriyaki chicken and some rice. I actually ate that, so I was, you know, warming up a little bit. I arrived to Jakarta super late, so I only got views of my building from a night、um, look at this point. I think it was about 2 a.m. when I got there, so this is actually where I live. Pulling in, this is actually what it looks like. Believe it, it is day three, and I am already requesting my own Gojek and being picked up on the back of motorbikes to get to my destinations. Slowly but surely, your girl is adjusting just fine. Yes, to all my moms out there, I am wearing a helmet. No, there are not any traffic rules, so you literally slide in where you fit in. And yes, I was terrified at first, but now I'm a regular. So, you know, this is the way that you get around. I mean, when I tell you it is so inexpensive, I can probably go, I don't know, eight to 10 miles for like US dollar, a dollar 25, seriously. So, it's like the best thing since sliced bread. Um, this was my first and last attempt at recording myself while on the back. I learned quickly that all people aren't good people, and another motorbike could easily ride past me and snatch my phone out of my hand. So, guys, it is tucked away in my purse or book bag while I am on the back now. So, no more fun videos, but hey, I did get this one. Uh, my first team outing was a success. I would pronounce the name of the restaurant, but I forgot how to say it, so I'm sorry. However, this place was a home that the family turned into a catering company, slash restaurant, slash photo studio. Pretty cool. As I walked up, I managed to get some nice pics of a few local Indonesians having a photo shoot. Amazing! Look at them! That's what I'm doing. Her mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is cute because it's short. I like all the shirts. I'm just going to put some of the shirts. Chloe. I can't. I'm sorry. What's so interesting about this experience is that I work for a company that has schools all over. However, the people that work in these schools, together we are groups, and the people you see here are spread out as close as 10 minutes away from me or as far as two hours away from me with traffic. With few from the US, some from the UK, some from Australia, Canada, and even some local, I was the newest person to arrive. So this was my first time meeting this group. I was talked to like I had been there forever, so it was here that I really began to feel like I belonged. 
I knew at this outing that I was doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing. So I really felt like, I don't know, like fulfilled, like I felt really good here. So <laughs> as you can see on the video and oh my gosh, I'm so sad I didn't get her name, but I love her. She was actually who pinned and dressed me. In Bahasa, she told one of my colleagues that I was shaped like a guitar, slim at the top with a big butt. Compliment, right? I think. <laughs> I would tell you exactly what this is, but I forgot how to say the name. So let's just say something similar to corn souffle, vegetables in a peanut sauce, chicken, spinach, and rice. But that's not how you say it in Bahasa, obviously. <laughs> These are just some clips of me dressed in the local fashion. Um, it's like what I told you guys about the owners of this place, how they actually turned it into a catering company and a restaurant and then a photo area where you actually go into their home. Um, you get dressed in their local clothing that they provide for you. And they have a photographer that does an amazing photo shoot. So it really, really, really gives you a chance to embrace the culture and just get a feel for, you know, how they are, how they dress. And um, I don't know, it was such a good time. Check me out. So to answer the hundreds of questions I've gotten, yes, I'm doing well. Yes, I'm safe and I'm living in my purpose. I'm enjoying myself. I'm learning new things daily. I will master this amazing language of Bahasa. I will try my best to keep you guys updated with video content. But most importantly, above anything else, I'm happy. So I say to you, make sure you're doing what you love because it's so true that it will never, ever, 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 ever feel like work. And just because I'm in Indonesia does not mean that my book still cannot be purchased. So make sure you guys head to Amazon or Barnes & Nobles online and grab a copy of The Beautiful Pieces of You. Be blessed.